black hole, so, so my throat gets very dry very quickly. So there they are, and they did quite well. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a very competitive business. After a couple of years, uh, they could not make as much money as they needed, and so it's still done, but at a very small scale. What has actually become very successful is a fisher business. This has now become quite big. In fact, they even uh, subcontract to other poor communities that the demands have been very good. They've been very good at design and production. Uh, but what I want, the reason I give you this example is I want to tell you that there was a long story before we got to this success of this business. These are young people who were formerly out of school youth. They, had, they were already into drugs, into vices, into many other things around 2003. A young woman, Elisa Yu, a uh, great social entrepreneur, one of the most fantastic young women I know, graduated in 2007, uh, she had worked with young people like this, and she went and befriended them. She was still a student. And, and she said, how can I help? Uh, what can I do to, to help you? And they said, uh, well, what we'd like to ask you is, can we have a center of our own? And they said they built it themselves. <coughs> so one of the first things they did, uh, she helped them to find some money to get materials. And I'm sorry, this is what I'm telling you now. Behind this journey of success is, is the journey of building up this other school use. So the first thing they did was to build this center. They were very proud that they built it themselves. They did the carpentry, they did the, they did the electrical wiring, and so on. <coughs> and they began to find more confidence in themselves. One of the things we learned, and maybe you also have found that in your schools, is that one of the most important ways of engaging young people in these poor areas are the performing arts. Um, we, so, so this is a picture, actually more recent picture. This was just last May. Uh, our, our dance group, uh, our theater group, every summer now runs a workshop for young people here, and they put on a great show at the end of the summer. But for this young group, I remember seeing them in 2003 and 2004. All to 2004, 2005, they were trained in dance, uh, music, uh, drama, and so forth. And in 2005, I saw them put on a performance here. It was fantastic. And what had happened is they began to find new confidence in themselves. They began to think of a better future. <coughs> and then they said, can you help us go back to school? And so we raised some small money for scholarships, and they've gone back to school. And there are now the young people running this, big, this business. So what I want to tell you is that uh, this is actually a performance they had just this May. These are different young people. So what I do want to tell you is behind the success of social entrepreneurship is building capability. I'd like to come back to that eventually, that uh, these things have to be built on human capability. And we as schools, that's what we do. We build human capability. And we engage almost all our groups of students, uh, performing arts students, uh, business students, uh, health students in health. We tell them that all of you have a role in building capability and creating this possibility for you. And they have to come together. If any, any part of the chain is missing, it won't work. <clears throat> the other thing I want to tell you is uh, the importance, the lesson we have learned about health. I must confess that I, I was not too clear before about uh, the role that health plays in getting people out of poverty and even in economic development. I was not too clear about that development. However, from the very beginning, our Academy of Graduate School of Business has always had an MBA in health management. Maybe not always, but at least, at least 30 years. At least 30 years. They, they have had an MBA in health management and initially influenced a lot of health practitioners in the hospitals. More recently, health practitioners at the community level. So they, they offer it at different levels. Managers of hospitals, doctors, but now also to the rural health workers all the, all the way down. Mm -hmm. um, and they start, they sponsor a program for leaders for health, changing the way people think, feel, and behave about health because we, the Philippines has always had rural doctors, but the biggest, and they have a clinic, yes. But the biggest problems people face is lack of safe drinking water, poor sanitation, poor nutrition. The doctor cannot solve that. The doctor cannot solve that. 
In order to solve that, he has to engage the mayor, he has to engage the local government, and so on. So, we give them an MBA, but together with the MBA for them, these all are modules for the mayor, <coughs> modules for the barak, what called the village uh, 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 heads, and part of their getting their degree is they have to engage these people. If they cannot bring them into the program, they don't get their degree. Uh, when we graduate them, we also graduate the mayors and the others. And we are quite delighted uh, with the improvement in health care in many of these places. So, and <clears throat> the one that has fascinated me is uh, working with our local governments and talking to them about uh, a program that the Philippine government established not so many years ago, maybe six or seven years ago, Paul Fielder. The very first time this country has got, gotten into massive uh, health insurance for the very poorest, you know, the poorest 20%, 30%, I don't remember, who are poorest 30% of, of, of the country. And it's not very familiar, but uh, we, well, I, mean, I knew it was important, but I never understood how important it was until we worked very closely with one mayor, Mayor Sonia Lorenzo of a small town called San Isidro, and this is what we learned from her. So this is a health unit, this is a mothers going with their uh, for what health healthcare. Um, this mayor, very innovative mayor, uh, she tells me that she's been mayor for the nine, more than nine years. She said that before she instituted these programs in field health, uh, uh, five o'clock in the morning, people are already lined up at their house with their uh, kind of their prescriptions, asking for some money because they didn't have any money uh, for it and she could not handle it. Once she did this, that, that disappeared and people went to the health centers uh, and, and so on. But the most interesting thing is at the same time that they did this, the town went from what they call a fourth class municipality to a second class municipality, it's measured by income. Uh, the income, uh, the, the income of the town went from like 5 million pesos a year to almost 10 times, about 50 million pesos a year. The farmers uh, used to harvest only 60 cavans per hectare. Um, I think a caban is two point kilos. I don't know. How many? 50 kilos. Uh, and and, and uh, about uh, 60 cavans per, uh, per hectare. And then now they harvest about 150. And I said, what's the connection? What's the connection? And she explained to me that. First, they say, because they said, without this health insurance, whenever somebody gets sick, they borrow at what we call 5 six, 20% a month. They borrow, say, 50 pesos, and they have to pay 60 pesos at the end of the month. They 20% a month. And the people don't realize that with that, they're perpetually dead. They will never get out. Uh, and, what, and so what happens is that, because of that, they don't have the money for the farm inputs. They, they have to cut down on the seeds. They have to cut down on the fertilizers. And so they have, and they are sick, so they cannot, they cannot harvest. And so it's a connection that I never quite understood, the connection between health in terms of savings and the connection between health eventually and income. And so um, this is second, so I, I, I talked to you about two major scientists we have had, which is through building homes and communities and creating businesses there. But we are now looking at this as an even larger strategy of how do we really get mayors to succeed in implementing uh, these health, uh, health programs and eventually uh, use it as a point of entry to improve income and to improve business in the place. Um, to summarize then, the strategy that we have entitled they don't have the capability to do it. And capability comes about all from education, from health, and eventually access to jobs or credit. I often put it negatively that uh, if you take a poor person and you give them money or a job, but they are not educated or they have tuberculosis, it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. So this is what we understood more and more. And the examples I've given you have made it even clearer to us the connections that really come. So as a university then, we realized that the, the role, so we asked for the role of our, our schools of business to work very, very much on the social entrepreneurship, to work on the finance, um, and uh, 
working with the system of that free national structure at the meeting just last week with the heads of that uh, system. But to ask the rest of the university, uh, our people working with the public school system, uh, our, our centers for health, our um, corporate arts, that we have all to go in there and we have to help build a human capability and we have to connect the dots. We, we have to connect them together till we achieve it. So we have learned that, so this is then the way we organize ourselves. Uh, we have social responsibility means about all building the nation or uh, coming poverty through building families and communities. I told you Mr. Tony that also will talk to you about our Kalina. We are the main partner. We have a center called our Kalina Ateneo. And actually Mr. Melodo spends more time with us at the national office. We provide a lot of support for, for the national system. We work with about a dozen communities. In here we build about 800 homes uh, in, 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 uh, uh, for them. Education, we work very extensively with the elementary and high school system in, in the country because it's very poor. And we, we work uh, we work with local governments. For example, we are in the city of Kansas City and we have a contract with the uh, government of Kansas City to work with all 143 schools. We help them to prioritize, we help them in the feeding programs, we help them in uh, health programs and of course improvement of academics. 